In the previous video on getting started with Key Vault, we saw how to move the connection string from the application's configuration file to Key Vault. But by doing that, we introduced a new configuration into the application, one that can be considered even more sensitive than a connection string, the client ID and secret to connect and authenticate with the vault. Anybody that has access to this can retrieve all the secrets from your vault. So the last thing we would want to do is to have the client ID and secret embedded into the application. In this video, let's see how we can remove the secret from the configuration file so that the key vault stays a secure place to have all our sensitive information. Other than using client ID and secret to authenticate with the Azure Active Directory application, it also supports certificate-based authentication. So an application can use a client ID and certificate to authenticate with the AD application and retrieve the token. This token can then be used to authenticate with the key vault the same as we did with the client ID and secret combination. To get started, let's first create a certificate. If you have one already from your organization, then you can skip this step. To create a test certificate, Let's first open Visual Studio Developer command prompt. The makecert command line tool along with pvk to pfx helps generate a self-signed certificate. If you are on Windows 10, you can use the new self-signed certificate PowerShell commandlet to create a certificate. To see the full options what each command line switch stands for use, make certificate dash exclamation. To create the certificate, use make cert dash sv mykey.pvk for the private key file dash cn equal to key vault web application to specify the certificate's subject key vault web application dot cer the certificate file name dash b1114 2016 to specify the start date and dash E11 14 2017 to specify the end date. Dash R to create a self-signed certificate. Running this command prompts for the password to secure the private key file. I'll use test for this example. Once done, it creates two files, keywallwebapplication.cer and mykey.pvk. Now to convert this to a pfx file, we use the pvk to pfx util. It takes the private key file, the certificate, the CER file, the name of the PFX file it will generate and the private key file password. pvk to pfx dash pvk my key dot pvk the private key file which is created dash spc key vault web application dot cer dash pfx key vault web application dot pfx the pfx file name to create dash pi test the private key file password. Executing this creates the pfx file. Let us now create an Azure Active Directory application and set the certificate as authentication credential. We will also associate the newly created AD application with the key vault so that it has access to the objects within the vault. Since the script is not a short one, I'll not bore you while I type through it. I have this already written and let's walk through on what it is doing. It reads the certificate data from the certificate file that we just created and creates an in-memory base64 representation of it. We then create a new Azure AD application and set the authentication to use certificate. To assign access to the key vault, we create a service principle and the access policy on the key vault with the required permissions. Executing this script adds a new AD application and assigns that to the key vault. Let us now go to the Azure portal and ensure that these are created as expected. Under the app registrations, we can see the AD application created with the same name. This is the one that the script just created. Under the key vault's access policies, we can see that a new access policy is added with the permissions specified in the script. Check the link on the screen or description for the full script. Now we can update the code 
to use the certificate based authentication with the key vault instead of secret. We will first need to load the certificate from the certificate store and then use that for authentication. To uniquely identify a certificate in the store, we can use the thumbprint. The get bfx certificate commandlet can be used to retrieve the thumbprint. Passing in the file path to the certificate that we just created in the above step returns us the thumbprint. I have written a small helper function that returns a certificate given a thumbprint value. This is currently looking into the local certificate store of the current user. The retrieved certificate is used to create a client assertion certificate object that can be used instead of the client credential object we used before. Since we created a new AD application in this demo, I'll get the new application ID from the portal under app registrations. Before running the application locally, let's install the certificate into the certificate store. Right click on the certificate and select install pfx. Select current user and next. Since the correct certificate is already selected, click next. Enter the password of the certificate that we set when creating the certificate. Manually choose the store and select personal and next and then finish. Once the certificate is installed, we can run the application. The AD application is now authenticated using the certificate to retrieve the token, which is then passed on to the key vault. The secret value is retrieved successfully and the code works as before. Now the application configuration file only needs the application ID of the AD application and the certificate thumbprint. This by itself are not sensitive and can be safely placed in the configuration file.